Today we're going to be talking about volume, about the x and y axis. So what happens, and I call this the washer method. I apologize, I just cut myself off. I call this the washer's method. Because what happens when I take an area where I'm not attached to the x-axis, there's a little bit of a gap. When I take that area and I revolve it around the x-axis. Well, I'm going to have a piece, I'm going to have a hole in my function. Now, if you think about this, this top function, we're going to have a circle here, and then another circle. For the bottom function, our g of x function, we're going to have that. So we're finding, essentially, we're summing up all the areas of all of these washers. Now, how do I find the area of one of these washers? And let me show you guys a better picture of what I found online. So, the area of that washer. So, how you get your area formula if your graph isn't exactly attached to an axis. Remember, it's pi. How would I get the area of that circle? You do pi big R squared minus your small r squared. Okay? Because you take the area of the big circle, you subtract the whole. Do you subtract the small radius? Which, what does that equate to in calculus? Pi. I have to sum up all of these different washers from A to B of the farther function away from your axes, so that's going to be f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. Okay, so I took my big circle, and I'm subtracting the small circle, and we're adding, we're summing up all of those formulas from A to B, all of those different washers that we have. That's why I call it the washer method. Okay, find the volume of the cell genera generated by revolving our bounded region across the x-axis. Okay, so we need to find these intersection points. So to find those intersection points, I'm first going to set the two equations equal to each other. And then I'm going to get one side to be 0. Now I'm going to factor out a 2. Now let's see if I can factor that. Am I able to factor that? And I sat for a little bit looking at this one. I can't factor that. So I don't know how to find those intersection points. But wait, I have a calculator. Calculator, I can't spell calculator. I have a calculator on my desk. So I'm going to take all that away, and I'm going to use the intersect feature on my calculator. And let me know in class if you don't know how to use that intersect feature. But I used my calculator, used my intersect feature, and I got negative 1.303 and there we got 2.303 so we're going to take pi the integral from negative 1.303 to 2.303 remember we're doing washers because it's not attached to the x-axis so I'm going to have one function squared minus another function squared dx okay you have to square the two functions individually now which function is farther away the function that's farthest away is our 2x plus 7 okay and then the function that's closer to our x-axis is going to be the function 2x squared plus 1. So from here, you take your integral. Remind me to show you guys this shortcut in class using y1 and y2. 
there's a shortcut that I want to remember to show you guys. I'm going to use my calculator to find this. I'm not even going to worry about finding any integrals there, okay? I just used my calculator, and I got 168.74 pi, which is going to be equal to 530.112. Okay, so some of the times you're going to have to use your calculator, so keep that in mind. Okay, next example. Find the volume of the solid that results when the region enclosed by our curves is revolved around our y-axis. Okay, so let's see what our functions look like. For some reason, our book really likes this, x equals y squared, which that's going to be a sideward, sideward's parabola. Our other function, x equals y plus 2, that's going to be a line with a slope of 1. I just use my two intercepts. Finding your points of intersection. I'm going to set those guys equal to each other. So I set y squared equal to y plus 2. y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. We have y minus 2, y plus 1. So we have y equals 2 and negative 1. So my integral is going to go from negative 1 to 2. Don't forget your pi. Farther function squared minus close function squared dy. And our functions, these functions here need to be in terms of y. So what you want to think about, even though our graph, even though this y equals, I'm sorry, x equals y squared hits our x-axis, when I actually take and revolve, points all the way over here. When I take and I essentially find the volume of that revolved around, that's going to be, there's going to be a hole in the middle here. I have some missing pieces. The entire shaded area, I should say, is not up against our x-axis. So that's why we have to use the washer method. Okay, the farther function is y plus 2. The close function the is y squared. So then, when you multiply all that out, you get y squared plus 4y plus 4 minus y to the fourth. And I did some simplifying already for us. Okay. I take my integral. So when I take my integral and I evaluate that, um, plugging in all my numbers, we get 72 pi over 5. Okay? And this one isn't too bad to do without a calculator. I would say this is a possibility of one they could give you guys on the AP. So keep that in mind. Okay? I don't think those numbers are too bad to do without a calculator. So again, keep that in mind. Okay, that is it for our washer method. Please make sure your video lesson is submitted on time.